Uh, hey guys, I'm Nick. I am the stage right guitar tech for Ghost. I handle the black guitar ghoul, the bass ghoul, and the Swiss army ghoul, because variety is the spice of life. Um, I just want to run you through our guitars we're using real quick. Um, these are upgraded Phantomans that we are using, very much based off of the uh, stock Phantomans you guys can pick up. Um, with this one though, we decided to go a couple different routes. I guess uh, starting uh, butt to nuts, um, we went with a five piece maple neck through construction because who doesn't love playing access? Come on. Um, we stuck with the mahogany wings. Um, on this one, we upgraded to CTS pots and Switchcraft hardware, not hardware, uh, jacks and switches. Um, and we're also using the Lundgren Black Heaven ceramics because ceramic is great. Um, on this, we went with an ebony fretboard, um, stainless steel frets, lumen lay side dots. We had them add a little bit of thickness, around 230 seconds to the actual headstock. We also upgraded the hardware to Shaler, Schaller, Schaller, Shaler. Um, we're actually using the STM roller bridges on these, um, as well as the GraphTech ratio locking tuners, which are just awesome. Um, and we also had them add a volute on the back of the headstock here just for more stability. And we're using a black tusk nut from GraphTech. Um, but these guitars are solid. Um, in conjunction with having a five piece maple neck, Hagstrom also has what they call the H expander, which is basically just a, a reinforcement piece of metal that the truss rod runs through. And uh, I don't know about our other guitar tech Max, but I haven't done a neck adjustment in probably at least a year. And I haven't done one on this one since it's been out of the box. And they last, they stay in tune, and they just work and sound killer. And here for the bass, we're using an American professional jazz bass. That's uh, a solid reinforced neck, maple neck as well. We're using a vintage high mass bridge on this, which is actually amazingly solid. Uh, yeah, we're using an Ernie Ball, little bit of a hybrid set. We're on the stainless. We're using a 45, 65, 80, 105. And that's a uh, D to F. Uh, so right here, we'll just have something quick for the baritone. We just go into one EW500 G3 Sennheiser wireless unit. That taps off and just goes straight to a Axe FX2. Um, we're using this for the Swiss Army Ghoul who does baritone and acoustic. Um, second, we jump over to guitar. We got two units here. They run into the Whirlwind multi-selector four by. This then patches off into the Fractal threes. Next, we get onto bass. So both basses come out and they actually go into a Layla Dual SGOS on the shelf down here, which is a, a MIDI unit that it's basically an ABT pedal. That runs up through each channel of this DBX266 XSX, XS. DBX266 XS, there we go. Um, compressor, limiter, and gate. Each channel of that runs into a Sansamp uh, GED2112, cause Getty. And then all of those lines run through here, which is a radial SW4. Most people use these for actually uh, wireless distribution. I like to run it as a line redundancy. So all backup lines that I have actually run through here. I can mute and go to backup channels. Um, and the only other thing really is uh, we have just a chorus on the bass um, and then MIDI redundancy in case we stop getting anything from our laptop. And then we're also receiving MIDI on a Hinton Long Haul Z2, um, which basically just converts a MIDI signal over to travel via XLR. So in theory, we could have an infinite guitar run if we wanted to. I mean, because MIDI usually dies out at about 40, 45 feet. With this, we could run a 200 foot MIDI line or run from front of house if we ever needed to actually do that for some hellacious reason. Um, the switching is all programmed off of uh, Ableton. Um, our other tech will run you through that as he is our MIDI aficionado. Um, yeah, everything here is really just self-contained automated, even the, the base rig is automated as well because we're using a dual SGOS from Layla. So that just takes MIDI and converts it to a TRS. And then we can just manage our patching within that. Alrighty, uh, my name is Max. I'm the stage left guitar tech for Ghost. 
I also handle keyboards and playback. Very exciting. Um, I guess my main priority and why I was brought on was to take care of the Hoyt guitar player. That ghoul in particular. Um, basically, he is now playing this uh, custom Hagstrom Phantomin. Uh, I believe Nick has gone into great detail about these guitars, so I uh, we'll leave the uh, woodworking and the specifications to him, but as a tech, in layman's terms, I'm a huge fan of these, uh, these instruments. They are um, reputable. They work well and reliably, and they sustain for days. So I'm very happy about that. We're using very nice hardware from uh, Schaller or Shaler. No one's officially given me the uh, pronunciation manual on that one, so I'll let you figure that one out. We've got roller bridges, uh, really high quality stuff. We've got uh, uh, Lundgren pickups, which I'm personally a fan of and I use in my own guitars at home. So uh, this is uh, right at home for me. Um, yeah, these are, these are fantastic guitars. They, um, they hold up every night uh, better, than, <laughs> better than a lot of things I've used in the past. Um, they're also very easy to play in that these new customs have uh, glow in the dark side dots, very visible. Um, also another shout out to Besttronics for all of our wireless to Sennheiser cables. Now if you've ever had the pleasure of using Sennheiser devices, you know that their cables aren't going to hold up in the long term. And then you go some other tour vendor and you buy some expensive wireless cable and it's going to die. But this Bestronics cable, oh no, oh no, very strong, very good. And um, once again, have to thank Nick for that connection. Uh, but I'm going to be using them for the rest of my life. Little things like that that make my day easier as a tech. Cables that don't break and guitars that stay in tune. Wonderful. So taking a look in my vault here, um, there is on the hard left another custom, but in a lot of ways, they're very, very much similar. I mean, first and foremost, these are heavier guitars. These customs are, um, I believe they have a five piece maple neck, mahogany wings and more wood all around. I think they're thicker as well. Um, there's simply more wood on this guitar than uh, the old stock models. And, um, I mean, it was, it was pleasant using a very light guitar, but there's something to be said for a real solid instrument. Even if it does cause a bit of shoulder pain, it's, it's worth it, I think, for the tone, the thing we all, the holy grail, you know what I mean? All right. Um, we've got, yeah, in total, right now, each of us, two customs, and the rest are stocks. Um, I have a huge guitar vault, as you may realize, but sometimes we have, uh, more guitars to play with, acoustic guitars, but on this tour cycle, I don't. So I have a big empty space where I store my clothing and a mic stand. Very exciting. All right, and uh, on to my favorite part of the rig. The rig. Um, I guess we'll start from the top. Uh, this never, or maybe not so common in rig videos, but on top we have a little section of artist care. There's a uh, Fisherman's Friend, there's some tobacco, there's some magic powder, and some tissues. You'd be so surprised how important it is as a tech just to take care of your artist exactly how he or she needs to be taken care of. You know, like little things like that, the little personal touch, I think that that completes a rig. If a rig sounds good, you know, it's full of nice gear, yeah, that's cool, but does it have tissues? I mean, come on. All right, uh, for tuning, we're using uh, the new Peterson Strobo Stomp, which is an unbelievable tuner that is actually so good it gives me a bit of anxiety. Um, basically, you can see how long your hand has been off the guitar because the strings cool down in the air. And so you end up playing this, this mind game with heat and the tuning of the guitar just to get it absolutely perfect, but then you realize there is no perfect, but you can get close, uh, and that's nice. Um, moving south, we have a blank rack unit with book binding taped to it. 
or excuse me, glued to it. And uh, that's where we put 10 picks every day, an inch and a half apart, exactly. Personal touch, what can I say? Um, these picks are Dunlop Tortex 1.14. They've got a custom logo on both sides. And um, basically what I do is I take a box cutter to every single one of these picks that he's gonna play and I carve some grip into it. And um, people ask me all the time, hey, why, why can't they just make a grip like that? I mean, I'm sure they could. You know, they have little dots that they can print on, but there's nothing quite like carving a knife into the plastic and having it ridge up and become incredibly, incredibly grippy. So, personal touch. <laughs> um, down one slot, we've got a Korg tuner. It's a bit of a legacy device, and it is there kind of for when the, uh, the Peterson is being a little bit um, too precise. We're getting really used to how precise the Peterson tuner is, uh, but there was a bit of an adjustment period where it was like, calm down. And, um, and the Korg is there being old faithful, old reliable, you know what I mean? And, um, and that, there's that. Below that, we have our Furman power unit. It has lights sticking out of the front that are very useful. Uh, this is actually a European Furman unit. It's a PL8CE, E for Europe, I assume. Um, and on the back are female IEC C14 plug outlets. And so there's 10 power outlets, which is actually really useful and Personally, if I had my way, I'd do that all over the world. Every country should have just IEC because it's universal and it's awesome. Um, real nice. In big letters on green gaff tape is the tuning we use because in the heat of the moment, you never know what you might forget. There it is. There's our main tuning in plain sight. Uh, moving south, we have a Sennheiser antenna, not combiner, but a distributor because this is a receiving device. And I only have two channels and that's fine. And the less RF you have to play with, the less coordination you do. And let me tell you, RF coordination is a thing of its own. Um, we've got two Sennheiser EW500G3s in the European rig, which is virtually identical to this. We have EW500G4s, which have about eight more megahertz of bandwidth. Whew. Um, on to the action of the rig. We have um, Whirlwind multi-selectors, which are really nice. And I think at the end of the day, I chose them for their simplicity and their huge tactile interface. Basically, these buttons are incredibly responsive, dead silent, and um, they haven't let me down once. And uh, Again, it's, it's a heat of the moment thing. You don't, you don't need to be fussing around with, uh, in my opinion, I don't need to be fussing around with tiny little buttons when it's time for rock and roll. Uh, basically, this is an input selector, one and two. Sometimes we use three for a long cable. Thankfully, we've never had to. Having two transmitters is nice. Uh, and then we have an output selector, so essentially we're using the same multi-selector to send it either to the axe effects or the tuner. And that's handy, because when it's sent to the tuner, the axe effects are dead, dead, dead silent. Um, <laughs> moving on, we have a Hinton Z2, which is an XLR to MIDI converter. And um, basically it allows MIDI information to be sent very, very, very long distances like through XLR snakes and what have you. And in practical applications, that's incredible because we can just have MIDI wherever we need it. And, um, you know, Nick's on the other side of the stage receiving MIDI information in his rig without fear of lossy data or any of that. He always receives his program changes. It's amazing. And it's a, it's a specialized, kind of an expensive piece, but it is, absolutely rock solid and um, all of our MIDI information and guitar changes from playback are absolutely rock solid as a result. We don't, uh, we don't have any questions or fears or concerns in that department, so that's nice. On this shelf, which you can't really see inside of, 
is uh, a Tech 21 MIDI Mongoose, which is kind of a perfect MIDI selector pedal, in my opinion. It is so simple and it is, again, rock solid. It's a local switcher for when we need to switch channels for you know reasons when playback is stopped or we're just kind of going through testing. It's, it's handy to have a local MIDI switcher because it's frankly faster than knobs sometimes. And uh, in the back, there's a Voodoo ISO 5, DC power, wonderful. Um, MIDI Solutions Quadra Merge for our MIDI needs, wonderful. And um, I think the real secret to this rig, which I could talk about later, but I'll talk about now, is transformer isolation, hands down. I've got transformer isolation on my inputs. I've got transformer isolation on my outputs. Life is good. Uh, for the input, we're using um, a Leela P-Split, but we're only using the ISO out, which is, um, they call it galvanic isolation in their manual, but it's a transformer isolation, but, you know, for uh, an unbalanced signal, and I've never had a noisy day with this rig, ever. <laughs> and that's great. Um, the main processing is done by this Axe FX3. We have an Axe FX2, in this case, 2XL Plus as a backup. Um, but with the rock solidness of the Axe FX as well, I have yet to be in a situation where I've had to switch. It sounds very, very, very close to the 3, but um, our, uh, our artists have spent more time with the 3, so things are very dialed on the 3 to say the least, and, um, and that's nice. <laughs> uh, another thing I have running out is, um, is a tuner out, a 75-foot run, which I'm converting uh, from unbalanced to balanced so it doesn't get all weird, and that's on the downstage corner, uh, and at any given time in the set, he can tune while he's playing or mute it and tune while he's not playing. And, um, he doesn't have to run back here to tune, he can do it on stage. And we have one of these Peterson tuners which is incredibly visible from even a distance. You can see the, uh, the digital strobes moving left to right very, very easily, uh, even from many, many feet away. So he can just kind of look to his left, tune, no problem. Kind of less, less friction, less reason to be running back here. No back and forth, it's nice. And, um, to top it off, our, our eco-conscious sort of vibe, <laughs> we have these uh, Fisher Amps ALC161 battery chargers. They have 9 volt chargers, but I don't use enough 9 volts to merit them, so in, in this case these are just uh, double and triple A chargers, and so we're using these nice uh, rechargeable double and triple A's for all of our battery needs in our Sennheiser devices, and that is great because we're not tearing through boxes of batteries every day and feeling guilty about throwing them in the trash can. Don't ask me about my paper towel use though on a personal front, that's a whole nother story. Um, we have a matrix in the rack because we at some time might want to use an ISO cab, but it was just one of those options we wanted to keep available. At present, we're only using the XFX in the ears and the house. And um, and it's very important to have a drunk drawer. Where do you, where do you think I put the tissues and the, the tobacco? And that's the rig. <laughs>